What's going on guys and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how you can fix the common fault relating to your rear tail light assembly. A while back, I did a video showing how to remove your rear tail light assembly. And in that video, I give a brief description on why there is a common fault with the W204 relating to your rear tail lights specifically the brown ground wire if you have not seen that video just to give you a quick run about the common fault what basically happens is due to such a thin gauge wire that they have used for the grounding of your rear tail light assembly what can happen is over a period of time the cable gets extremely hot and with extreme heat it can cause a fire cause the wire to melt and dim out your tail light due to an inconsistent connection therefore also throwing error messages onto your in instrument cluster or dash and that's why Mercedes has also sent out letters and information about a recall for this common fault as it is a safety issue if I were you I would try and contact my local Mercedes-Benz dealer and ask them if your car is still able to be fixed under the recall. That way you can get this fixed free. But honestly, to save yourself the trouble and the hassle, there are two ways I'm going to show you that you can fix this yourself quite easily. This is going to be a permanent fix. It's going to allow all the issues to go away relating to this common fault. The first thing you want to do before we get started is basically remove your rear cover for your tail lights and then remove your backing plate. If you're unsure of how to remove your backing plate, then uh, be sure to watch this video in the top corner right now. It shows you exactly how to remove your rear tail light assembly and even how to remove the backing plate. In this case, all we need to do is remove the backing plate and then we can choose which way we're going to fix this issue as I'm going to show you two different ways to fix this. One is the less intrusive way and the other is the more intrusive way. I'm going to show you how to do both so you can decide for yourself which way you'd rather use in order to fix your problem. So here's what we're going to do first. We're going to need a multimeter in order to test for continuity. And in order to do that, you just plug in your black and red wire where it belongs and then turn turn your multimeter to continuity which is this symbol right here okay it has a uh, volume symbol and then a kind of like a arrow pointing to a straight line and then you simply turn it to that and in order to test that your continuity works you just touch your two cables together and it will beep as you can hear that tells you that your two wires are meeting together so that you can test where the connection is running from one point to another. If it doesn't beep, then somewhere along your connection, it does not connect. And now, in order to test for what your ground is connected to, we know right here that this last pin on the far left is where the brown ground wire is connected to. So, in order to test what it is connected to and what is being grounded according to your tail light assembly, what we need to do is connect one of our pins to this plug and then from here we need to touch certain points so that we can find out what is being grounded. For the sake of this video, I'm going to use another set of testing cables which have clamps that way I don't have to try and hold the cable to the ground pin while I'm testing this side for the grounding point. I'm just going to connect one side of my alligator connector cables to the testing pin and then connect it to the point where the brown cable is connected to for our grounding point. And now that that is connected what we're going to do now is we're going to touch certain points of this plate to find out what is connected to that grounding pin and in order to do that just like we did before we test make sure that the continuity is still there make sure that it is uh, working and then all we do now is we touch certain points to find out 
where it is that it is being grounded. Okay. Okay, so from this test, we can see that the entire plate is a grounding point. As you can see, as I run this along my 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 backing plate's grounding point, any of these points would be a grounding point. From this testing, we know that in order to get another grounding connection, we need to somehow get this part of the backing plate to a another grounding point of the car, but bare metal. So. I'm going to show you two ways in which you can do this. Now that we've figured out that this grounding point here is connected to this back, this back uh, metal plate of your backing plate, what we need to do now is use a thick enough gauge wire in order to handle the amount of current that comes through the cable. Now, in this case, I do recommend to use a 15 amp wire that way you are 100% sure that it will be able to handle the load regardless. Now, I've heard some people use 8 amps to uh, 15 amps, even 10 amps, but um, in my case, I'm going to go with a 15 amp cable. It's just to give me peace of mind that it will definitely um, be able to handle the load. You can even also use a 10 amp if that's what you have lying around, but if you're going to buy a cable, then go for a 15 amp cable. Just for the sake of the video, I'm going to use this black uh, 15 amp cable right here, as you can see. I do recommend to go with the same color scheme that Mercedes has gone with. So if you can find a brown one, then definitely go with the brown one. That way, you're just keeping up with the same color scheme as Mercedes. Okay, and also make sure that your wire is long enough so that if ever you have a bulb that needs to be replaced, you can remove the backing plate and have enough room in order to change the bulbs at the same time. 600 mil will definitely do. And um, what you do now is get a set of wire strippers. In this case, I'm using a combination of strippers, cutters, and also uh, crimpers. This is a great tool to have. Right, I'm just going to cut it. And then what you do now is you strip both ends, okay? This is going to be the first way I show you how to fix your rear tail light assembly. What I'm going to do now is just sand back a little bit of this bare metal. That way I know I'm getting contact to bare metal. Alrighties, and then what I'm going to do now is simply solder it to bare metal. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do now is tin the end of my wire. Just to get a little bit on there first, just to make it easier. Okay, so as you can see, I'm just melting a little bit onto here. And then what I do now is, I put some on the end of my uh, wire. We heat it up and then we apply a little bit onto it so that it covers the entire cable, like so. Okay, we do it all the way around. There we go. As you can see here, we have the end of the wire tin now. Now it's just a matter of soldering it to this point right here. Okay. So I've tinned it now. Now it's just a matter of getting this to stick. We heat it up. Get it to stick. Okay. Solder it to this point here. Make sure you get a good blob on. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to do a quick one. So I just quickly soldered it there as I'm going to remove it. But make sure you do a nice soldering connection. Okay, and then you push your cable through here. A uh, piece of advice, if your cable's gonna run through here, make sure you turn the cable this way so you solder it this way. Like I said, I've just done this quickly just to show you guys. And then, with the other end of your cable, simply connect it to a eye ringlet. Now we're going to test to see if we have continuity from that eyelet eye ring to our point. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put one ring in there and then touch our point of contact. There we go. 
Okay, so now this tells us that we have continuity from our grounding point to our I-ring. So now all we have to do is find a grounding point of the car's bare metal and then we can connect it to this using a bolt and we're good to go. That is one way we can connect this. The second way to do this is the more intrusive way. What you're going to do in this case is, I'm not going to do it as no point in me doing this unless I decide to do it this way. But most likely I'm going to settle for this way where I just solder it on. So in this case, what you're going to do is use a bolt and a nut and a washer. Okay, there's going to be two ways you can do this. The first way I'm going to show you is make sure the bolt that you're using will go through the entire thickness of your light. Okay, make sure that there is nothing on the other side that will um, interfere with your connection. And all you're going to do now is you're going to drill a hole. You're going to drill a hole straight through here and it will come out the other side. And then you're going to put your bolt through, get a nut on the other end and then bolt it to it. Now I do recommend to use a strong little bolt because all you're doing here is you're just allowing there to be a bolt to hook on another ringlet such as this. So you're going to put it through here, simply bolt it to your tail lights backing plate. That way you have a grounding point like so. Okay, and that's all we are doing here. You're bolting it straight through so that you have a grounding point. And then once you do that, you test to see if your grounding point is successful by touching your two points again. And there we go. It is successful. On the other end of the grounding point, you would then connect a eyelet just like you did this one. You would make another eyelet on the other side of your wire so that you could simply connect it to a grounding point of the car. And that's it. Of course, whatever size it is that your bolt is that you're going to put through your drilled hole, make sure your, your drill bit is somewhat the same size. They are basically the same size. And that's what you want, guys. Don't make it bigger than you have to. And then you would simply get a drill, or if you have a hand drill, you would then simply drill straight through the point. Okay, you can choose any point you wish, as long as there is enough room for your bolt to go through. In this case, I could use here, as I'm using a very thin bolt, and the washer is only very small also. Okay, as you can see, the smaller the bolt and the washer, the easier it's going to be to choose a point. In this case, I could use this point here, this point here, that point there. But these points are going to be the best because they have the most amount of room and it is close to a open window where you can just feed your cable through. Now I'm going to show you where you can connect it to, to the point of the car. For the back right hand side, here is your grounding point. Now, normally I would go with a grounding point that they have already used. For instance, that one right there okay but in this case as you can see there is another bolt right there so if you'd like you can simply put your eyelet on there put a bolt to it and it will be a solid grounding point point. and then for the left hand side if you take a look down here you'll see that there are two bolts that secures your factory amplifier you can use either one of these bolts and because it is connected to this metal plate that holds your amplifier i'm also sure you could even put a bolt through here a nut on the end and then simply bolt it down and that can be your second grounding point for your left hand side so you could use for the left hand side either these two bolts down here or just simply put a bolt through there and a nut on the other side and it would work also and these are the grounding points you can use now i'm going to give you a demonstration of how we can look when you put it all together okay so i've gone ahead and reconnected all my lights as you can see this is the new ground wire we have connected to the plate and then this is the new grounding point that we are going to use we then get a nut and put it on top i believe it is a 10 mil nut that you're going to need and in order to test to make sure that it is a grounding point and that it does connect to 
our uh, plate, we then retest it. Okay, so we touch our back plate again. And then with the other side of our multimeter, we touch this. And there we go. Beautiful. That works out. Okay, and now we, I'm going to turn on the car to show you guys that there are going to be no error messages when you do it this way. There you go guys, I've now started the car and as you can see, I've grounded the new connection and it works just fine. Just to show you that there are no error messages, I'm going to take you around to the car now. With the car still running and with the indicators on, as you can see right there, there are no error messages whatsoever. Uh, shout out to these two subscribers who specifically asked me to do this video as they are trying to fix this problem themselves at home via DIY. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, to anyone else who is interested in doing this DIY themselves at home, be sure to watch this video and uh, you will see for yourself how to fix this problem. I also wanted to point out, I know that there is a recall for this, but um, I do strongly recommend to do this yourself as as it is such a simple fix. It really will save you the hassle of having to take your car in, make an appointment, pick up your car. You know how it is guys, what it is like for you to get your car fixed from a Mercedes-Benz dealer. So I do strongly recommend that you do this fix at home yourself as it will only take you, you know, anywhere from 20 minutes if you're very experienced and even uh, anywhere up to an hour for the non-experienced. And that brings us to the end of the video. When it comes to doing this fix, the most important thing to remember here is to make sure you have a good grounding point and also a good grounding point for your car, meaning the bare metal. And lastly, above all, make sure that the wire, the gauge wire you decide to use is definitely thick enough to hold the amount of current coming through. Remember that it is the ground cable for your entire tower light assembly and all the lights that is being run on your rear tower light. Now, some people have asked me if it makes a difference if you use all LED lights. Look, honestly, it might make somewhat of a difference, but I don't think it's going to solve your issue altogether. In the end, your only real fix for this issue is to use a new grounding point altogether, such as this right now. I also wanted to say that when it comes to your original uh, connector via your harness, you can either disconnect that altogether. The whole point is to find a new loop for the ground. That way it bypasses the original flimsy connection. So if you found this video helpful guys, give it a thumbs up. And as always, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Mike with Mikey's Vlogs. Signing off.